what makes buying power a reliable risk gauge? So we're going to look at just risks relative to buying power here uh, to, to give you an idea of like quantifying naked risk where it's technically undefined. Right. Okay. Let's do it. Do it. Um, so prior to execution, double check that buying power is in an acceptable range. This is an amount needed to put on the trade. So in a margin account, a rough way to kind of determine what the buying power is going to be on a position is roughly 20% ish of the notional value of the put side. So if you sell a hundred, a hundred strike put, you typically use somewhere around $2,000 in buying power to hold that position. It can change based on a number of factors. So volatility, duration, time on that, on that option, uh, the, the vol, the vol being the biggest kind of component of that, the relative price of that underlying, you can have changes based on uh, broker to broker risk parameters. So there can be exchange parameters. There can be, uh, uh, status like hard to borrow can, can influence buying power. So this is, this is very much a, uh, a dynamic, thing when you're trading options. And it's one of the reasons why we always talk about kind of keeping size small and keeping cash available on the sidelines, because a lot of those metrics can change throughout the duration of the trade. Um, buying power reduction is an excellent, excellent way, though, to determine our max risk, or at least quantify the max risk on a trade. Our research so, shows that over the last 15 years, years there is a roughly 0.1% chance that the trade's P&L results in a loss that exceeds the buying power. And we're looking at spy strangles here. Uh, overall market, um, uh, uh, S&P 500, obviously the overall market. When you put those trades on, your buying power is roughly your max pain. There are cases I mean, where- that's, I mean, the brokerage firm has taken a dollar in commissions, right? I mean, that's, you know, we don't, we take buying power away and a dollar in commission. So for our $1 in risk or $2 on a strangle, one contract on each side, um, we are gonna take enough buying power, which we feel comfortable. The broker's firm is gonna take enough buying power, not me, but I, I'm representing them in this story. Um, they're gonna take enough buying power that they feel pretty comfortable uh, for $1 to take all that risk. Yes, and brokerages have been around for quite some time. So it seems to have been a, a, a metric that has worked. Um, yes. and so, so here we're kind of going to get into that. So the question we get a lot is how does, uh, how buying power really, it, or how does buying power really measure risk and what makes buying power a re reliable risk gauge? So we're going to kind of just quantify risk on, uh, via spy strangles. And obviously there's, there's much more risk relative in a Tesla than there is a sure. SPY strangle, and that's all priced in as well. That's that's going to be reflected in the buying power. Very Next nice. slide here. So, um, uh, so the study that we're looking at is we're looking at the last five years. So we're looking at SPY from 2020 to 2025. We're looking at short puts, 45 days, managed at 21 days till expiration. Uh, so we're taking the undefined side out of this. We're just looking at the short puts. We're looking at a varying... Uh, delta here from, from five all the way up to 50. The implied volatility here has been in a range from a hundred, from 10 to a hundred. So we've had, you know, wide ranges of implied volatility over these last five years. You're talking about uh, COVID, uh, the carry trade online, tr Trump tariffs, you know, we've had a lot that has happened in the last five years. So this gives you a, you know, there's some real uh, big events it baked into this data set. Uh, this has not been a grind market the entire time. You've had some big ones here. So we're going to look at um, the buying power and then the underlying price variations throughout it. And then we're going to look at, you know, we're really going to analyze the results to assess how buying power can gauge the risk. We're going to really look at the risk on these trades versus the buying power on entry. Very good. And the buying power changes, of course, but we're just looking at entry. Right. It, it 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 changes with the price. Yes. More expensive uses more buying power, more room. Yes. Uh, so the next slide here. Uh, if naked buying power is too high, it can be adjusted by just turning this into a spread. So to as as I mentioned in the beginning, you know when you're naked a put. Typically, you use somewhere around twenty percent of the notional value of that put option. If you want to. You know, make it less risk. Just spread off the trade, and this can apply. Right. 
to uh, uh, a reason to do this is also applicable to the account type. So if you're in a cash or an IRA account, it probably makes sense to always buy the put in some uh, in some fashion, whether it's a one delta or two delta put option, or you want to do it based on the value of the put. Maybe you only want to pay ten bucks or ten cents for the for the put for each uh, naked position. It makes sense to do that just to get some of that buying power relief. Um, but getting into the buying power, the buying power relative to these naked positions, um, let's go to the next slide here. So as pr the spy price rises, margin require requirements increase almost linearly. So you have a, a perfect correlation of buying power increasing based on price, and that's not a shock to anybody because price is one of the inputs that goes into you know risk when things get more expensive there's going to be more risk uh, a stock that's at ten dollars can only go to zero if the stock goes to a hundred there's obviously a lot more risk because now it can go from a hundred to zero so as the stock goes up your buying power is going to increase as well on that position. Tra traders should reduce the position size during market uptrends to maintain consistent capital allocation while market pullbacks naturally free up buying power for new entries. So you got to keep in mind that as the market goes up, putting on new positions and putting on risk is going to get you know, more expensive. It's going to be harder to, to hold those positions. We talked about Netflix, you know, Netflix, you kind of have to be defined risk in those trades because of the price of the asset. Um, you know, it's no different with markets as a whole. So your average buying power increases, you know, linearly with the movement in the market or whatever stock you're you're trading here. So that's just kind of like a, a basic for you. Very good. good uh, next, next slide here. So we're, now we're going to get into a um, uh, uh, discussion of just the delta in buying power. So you would expect, you know, delta and buying power have a high positive correlation. Of course, delta is a measure of risk as well. When you have a 50 delta option, you have uh, more exposure to that underlying than a five delta option. That's just uh, relative to the size of the position. Higher delta options closer at the, mire, at the money require significantly more margin than lower delta options. And that's because you have less exposure. Your delta is, is relative to the size of the position. When you're sizing the position bigger, you're going to use more capital. Um, and that goes up pretty much linearly. I mean, like you, you see that kind of extend to the upside here. The 10 to 20 delta range is typically where we are trading. And it's sort of the optimal risk reward. And we've done a, a thousand different studies on this range of, you know, between 30 delta and one standard deviation is kind of our sweet spot. You get the directional exposure, you get the exposure to volatility, you know, your risk is is relatively in line. I mean, we're not changing the game here with this study at all. We're just kind of, um, you know, putting more context into reiterating what's optimal, or at least what we found optimal from our research. Yes. And, and as you go, you know, like, as you go further out of the money, obviously, the buying power is going to decrease, but your actual reward is also going to decrease as well. And you're still keeping the same amount of tail risk. Right. So, you know, you got to kind of, that that's something that you have to kind of build yourself of what your risk tolerance is. Um, you know, some people might be selling at the money puts into this move today. And if you did sure. that, it worked certainly today. Sure. Um, but you got to kind of build that yourself here. This is just kind of a, a look at, at how the buying power curve is across uh, Delta here. I think the most important thing is implied volatility, which is our next slide here. So let's get into the next slide here. Um, taking a look at IVR and IV, uh, those are going to be negatively correlated with buying power. So when volatility increases, and if you're short premium, you're short volatility, your buying power is going to increase. We're not. I'm not telling you anything you shouldn't already know. You should know that if volatility expands, your positions are also going to expand in buying power. And this is why, you know, when volatility is low, we suggest taking chips off the table and using less capital. When volatility is high, we kind of allocate more capital to trades because we're expecting volatility to contract. When volatility is low, we're expecting it to expand. These are all just the mechanics that we go through. Um, higher implied volatility correlates with lower buying power usage um, as traders defensively reduce position sizes during volatility spikes to manage risk. This creates re-entry opportunities when volatility normalizes uh, and traders can safely ex increase exposure as vol compresses and buying power recovers. So 
Here, you should just keep in mind that as volatility expands, you're going to see uh, buying power expand as well, and that's why you got to keep some some chips uh, off the table for those periods of time. Very nice. Good job. Couple takeaways here, uh, and then we'll open up the phone lines and get to uh, Quentin from the trade desk. Price yes, we will. Uh, by the way, that number eight five five two three eight two seven eight nine or eight five five be tasty. If you've got any questions, concerns, comments, we would love, love, love to hear from you. So give us a buzz. Uh, Nasdaq twenty five hundred, twenty five thousand. I should say twenty five thousand was twenty five hundred. We in trouble. Yeah. Uh, price delta and implied volatility are three key drivers of buying power, making a re reliable gauge of risk. It's risk in the moment, though. You have to right. keep in mind that that risk can change. Buying power sh would will change based on changes in the market as all. Well. Historically, which is about 99% of the time, losses were less than the buying power. Uh, and we're talking max losses from those naked puts on entry, mm -hmm. uh, being less than what the buying power was, the the significantly um, uh, amount of time. Buying power uh, has a strong positive correlation with delta as well as price. So as prices go up, as you go to a higher delta, you're going to use more buying power. This shouldn't shock anybody. Buying power has a negative correlation with volatility. So volatility expands, buying power increases. If volatility contracts, buying power decreases and so on. Um, all those things are dynamic and they're going to change. So you got to just keep that in mind as always.